Welcome back to this 46th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one we're going to carry on with the form that we were working on in the last video. And so in the last video we did sort of the what happens on the get request, but now we're going to sort of deal with the post request. So in other words, when the uh, user has written some data in that form, filled that form out, press the submit button and they now want to send that data to the web server and then we can receive it and do what we want with it. So let's go ahead and do the post request in our view. This is the view that we're using to power this sort of page here that we have and it inherits from template view which is what we're using in order to render the home.html uh, template uh, which has of course that form on it. So at the moment we can send a get request, if we if I refresh this you can see it gets the form and we can fill it out but at the moment if we press submit it doesn't really do anything, it says method not allowed uh, because we sent a post request but the view does not support uh, a post request, it doesn't know how to handle that so it just says well, I don't know what to do with that, it doesn't break as such but it just says oh I don't know what to do, I'm confused so here's a blank page. Okay. So it's what's called a 405 error, uh, so it's not completely broken, but anything that starts with a 4 is generally bad. So let's go ahead and address that now. So in the views.py, under where we've defined the method for the get request, I'm going to simply say def post. So as you might have guessed, this handles the post request. So I'm going to say self and request, just like the other, uh, the get request above, so self and request. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the form, similar to what we have here, we're going to create a new instance of the class, so I'm going to say home form, but instead of leaving the uh, class initialized empty, just like this, so I'll put the equals as well there, instead of just leaving it like this, like we did with the get request, this, this would work, but it would render a blank form again. But what we can do is we can say request dot post and what this is going to do is it's actually going to initialize that form but instead of it being blank like it is here it's actually going to fill the form out again with the data that was received with that post request so I can say something like if form dot is valid because remember the Django forms have the validation already built in so we can simply use that and we don't have to do anything special to be able to do that so it's already then done for us, which is really nice. So what I can do now is I can say this text that was entered on the website, uh, I can't refresh the page and show you, but it was that text that we can enter in the form. And I can say, to get that text from the post request that we've received, I can say data. So it has a method for sort of sanitizing that response, making sure there's no sort of nasty hackery or anything that's been put into that form like SQL injection trying to break our website Django already sort of anticipates that and realizes that there's nasty things on the internet that will try and break our site and it's provided a method for us to be able to make sure the data that we are trying to receive in the post request is not going to be harmful to our web application so that's what clean data does in a nutshell and what it takes is I'm just simply going to give it the uh, field name itself. So in forms.py we have the form itself, very simple form here, and we call it post. And that is why I'm saying post as a string here. That's what it takes. So then I can simply render the form, and I'm just going to copy this from the get request. I can render it just like that. So with the same template, and I'm going to pass form through. But in this case, I do also want to pass text, so I'm going to break that out into a, another variable call it arguments or args for short and I'll say so we're passing through the form still because we need the form to be rendered still and I want to also pass through text which is what we're going to call the sort of data that was stored within this form so I'm just going to say text just like this and I just pass arguments through like that so that the template has access to those two things and now we can see if this works, so I can refresh, continue. So we get this form now, and so I submitted a previous post request, which apparently I typed this data in, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to resubmit a get request. So I'm just gonna hit enter in the URL instead. 
So if you didn't know, I'm just going to submit a post request again. So you can see we did post get post. So if you didn't know this about, well at least Chrome, but I'm pretty sure other web browsers as well, when you're doing post and get requests, when you're trying to test them in the browser, if you want to redo the post request, you can hit Control or Command R on your keyboard and that'll do a refresh in your browser and that'll resubmit the post request. So that's the same as hitting the refresh button at the top. Confirm forms resubmission. This is redoing the post request. Are you sure you want to resubmit the data in that form? Because it might lead you to sort of purchase something twice if you're not careful, uh, if you're trying to resubmit that data. Most sites are more sensible than that, but you never know. But if you want to actually redo the get request, what you can do instead of sort of trying to fiddle around with this form here or anything, click in the address bar and then you can hit enter. And what that's going to do, that's going to send a get as instead of a post. It's going to just re sort of ask for all those things from the web server again. So all these templates and things, it's going to get them again, make sure it's up to date and present you with that. And of course, in doing so, that's going to reset our form to a blank form because that's what we rendered in the get part of the view. So that's just a little extra bit of information that I thought might be useful if you're trying to sort of submit post requests versus get requests and sort of test maybe lots of post requests. You can just hit refresh as opposed to having to do the get request and then the post request. So with that said, we can do uh, submit now and that submitted our data and it renders the form with this text again. So what I could also do is pass that text through to a template. So just for to show you, I could say something like h2, so I'll render a header, and I'm just going to say text, just like that. And then when I refresh, I'm gonna resubmit the post request, then that text appears. I could change this text and resubmit the post request, and that text will update. If this form, if say you didn't want this data in the form, you could, in the view, after we define the text variable, you could simply initialize another blank form so I could say home form like this, and if we did that, uh, I'm just going to submit a get request now, see how that can be quite useful, and refresh the form, enter some data, and now the data appears here, but not in the actual form. Now this is what JavaScript can be quite good for if you want to make sort of interactivity and make your websites more dynamic, but in terms of Django, this is pretty much as good as it gets because it's a server-side sort of language that we're working with here, or framework. Now one thing I also want to point out is that when you're doing this, generally speaking, when you submit a form and then send a post request to the web server using, the, say, this submit button, generally speaking what you want to do is redirect the user so that you don't accidentally get them to submit the form twice because in most situations you don't tend to want the data submitted twice, it could cause accidents or users being created twice or you know just make a bit of a mess in general. So generally what's it, what is safer to do is to sort of redirect the user. So you could say something like return redirect and then if you want to st still put the home page on you could still redirect them to the same page essentially. I need to import redirect here. But when you do that, if you then do this again, I'm just going to uh, resubmit a get request and enter some data here and submit. Now it renders blank, so it's not exactly like it's useful if you want to present the data immediately, unless you store it in a database and then recall that data on the next request, which you could do, and we'll talk about that in the next video.